So you've decided you want to fly the F-14, but you don't want to do a lot of work. Maybe one of your buddies is sick of Jester's bullshit and finally wants someone who knows what they're doing riding in the back seat. You want to try to help, but you have no idea where to even begin. I'm going to teach you the short and sweet things you need to know in order to be an effective Rio and successfully bond as a crew. Let's start with keybinds. First off, TID range, plus and minus. This controls the displayed range on the TID from your aircraft indicator to the top edge of the screen. Next up is radar azimuth scan, narrower and wider. This controls the width of your radar sweep. We also have radar azimuth left and right. These two keys control the sweep of your radar left and right across its full range of motion. Radar elevation up and down controls the vertical angle of your radar. HCU TID and radar buttons determine which display your HCU stick is giving its input to. HCU TID gives input to the TID and HCU radar gives input to the DDD, the digital data display. The DDD identify friend or foe button interrogates radar contacts either on the DDD itself or when a radar return is selected on the TID. Next launch changes the launch order of a selected TID contact. When pressed, the selected contact becomes number one in the launch order. HCU half action enables the slewing of the cursor on the displays and full action executes actions specific to the TID or DDD, whichever is selected. On the TID, it selects a radar or data link contact and on the DDD, it attempts a single target track on a selected radar contact. Cap buttons perform actions dependent on the position of the cap category switch. For the purposes of which I have cap buttons 6 and 8 bound, these designate a selected TID contact as friendly for button 6 or hostile for button 8. Flare SGL and Chaff SGL are buttons used to launch a single countermeasure charge of their respective type. Radar track wall scan manual and radar pulse doppler search buttons switch the radar between TWS manual and PD search modes. Start off by asking your driver to turn on ground power and air supply and begin his own startup process. Set TV IR switch to on. WCS switch to transmit. TID mode to attack. Navigation mode to ground. Rio oxygen switch to on so you don't pass the fuck out. Liquid cooling to on. TACAN mode to transmit receive. ARC 182 mode to whatever the fuck 2 clicks is. TCS field of view to narrow. Fuel tank jettison left and right switches to up. WCS mode to TWS manual. ALR 67 power to on. DECM switch to standby. Data link power to on. Sorry, my track IR lost its profile and the new one's pretty rough. ALE 37 power to manual. Cap category switch to nav. We're going to input our latitude, longitude, altitude, and magnetic variance for our aircraft's initial position. I have the numbers bound to my number pad on my keyboard, but it's fine to input them using the cockpit keypad. You can also take this time to input your data link frequency to the left of the data link power switch on your right hand panel. Switching the cap category switch to tactical data, we can input waypoints and other points of interest. I forgot to enable stored heading align. That makes the alignment go by so much faster, but I'll skip us ahead to the completion of the alignment. The alignment is complete when the diamond reaches the end and has the dot in the center. Set the nav mode switch to INS. At this point, the aircraft is ready to taxi.
As you can see, we are in TWS manual mode, and we have two contacts on radar, which we can see by the half square are automatically designated as unknown. I'm going to use the HCU half and full actions to hook the target on the right. Displayed are the range to target in nautical miles, the target's altitude, and closure rate in knots. In aircraft stab and attack modes, the line on the contact is its closure rate, not its heading. In ground stab mode, where north is at the top of the screen, the line represents the contact's actual heading. As you can see, we have both contacts raw returns on the digital data display. Their position on the DDD represents their closure rate, not range, with higher closure rate being higher and lower closure rate being lower on the screen. By holding the IFF button, we can see that the contact we selected on the TID is a friendly, represented by the large black rectangle that appears whenever the radar sweeps over the contact on the digital data display. With the CAP category switch in target data mode, we use CAP button 6 to designate this contact as a friendly, represented by the half circle on the TID. Hooking the other contact, we IFF it as well. We see that the DDD returns this contact as a barely visible line, indicating this contact is hostile. Using cap button 8, we designate it as a hostile, represented by the half diamond on the TID. By pressing HCU radar mode, we use half action to move the DDD cursor over the left hand contact and use full action to try and acquire a single target track on this contact. The acquisition is successful and all of the relevant target data is displayed, but because you have your gun to the head of one unlucky motherfucker in particular, you are not able to see any other returns unless you are receiving a data link track. Switching TID mode to TV, we can see the camera view of our contact for visual identification. Notice that PD search also displays DDD contacts in terms of closure rate, but switching to pulse search displays them in true range. In this case, I set the DD range to 50 miles, and each tick mark on the left and right ladders represents 10 nautical miles. You can increase or decrease the visibility of the DDD contacts in pulse search by rotating the pulse gain knob on the left. The INS of the F-14 will drift over time and with hard maneuvers. If you notice that data link contacts are starting to drift apart from their radar returns, it's time to fix the problem. We'll start by using a visual fix. After returning to base and coming to a stop, press F-10 to bring up the map and zoom as far in on your aircraft icon as possible. Hover your mouse over your icon. The coordinates and altitude are displayed in the upper left of the screen. Write these down. Exactly the same way you enter coordinates for waypoints, we're going to add that location to the fixed point waypoint. The fixed point will be displayed on the TID as an X and will be hooked after entering the location data. Press the button for visual fix. By looking at the top of the TID, you can see how far your INS has drifted. Press fix enable, and after confirming the drift has been eliminated, unhook the waypoint. A visual fix can be done while in the air by flying over a pre-planned building or terrain feature. Another method is to use a TACAN fix. A TACAN fix is another option to fix the INS drift while in flight, but accuracy will decrease the further your aircraft is from the TACAN station. First, you'll need the coordinates, altitude, and frequency of a TACAN station. Enter the coordinates and altitude into your fixed point and ensure that you are on the correct TACAN frequency and are receiving it on the dial. Press TAC and fix and verify that the INS has drifted. Press fix enable and then TAC and fix again to confirm that the INS has been corrected. Unhook the fix point 
and continue mission. As a good Rio, your pilots will totally value your skills with the aerial microwave, and hanging out in the back seat with your feet up will occasionally give you something to do while you broaden your education. Rio stands for Really Intelligent Onlooker. We're wrinkly brain players with god complexes, and we don't let stupid in the front seat forget about it. Hopefully this guide has been a good starting point for you, and we hope to see you on Enigma's Cold War. Checklist out.